maybe we just aim yeah, it this yeah, way. Yeah, I have it up like so it gets like better Wi-Fi, but mm -hmm. here, let's just do it. <clears throat> oh yeah. We are live and in effect. What's up everybody? I'm guessing you're fully zoomed in right now. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be so much nicer to be able to move the camera. The last live stream we did was Cam and I building a fire pit for way longer than I intended. And the camera wasn't even looking at us half the time. So for the people that really stuck, stuck it out on that last live stream, thank you. That was a fun one. We actually, um, we set out to make a fire pit and the drawing was wrong and we didn't know the drawing was wrong until we had already cut the parts out. And so we go to try to assemble this thing and it's like not at all fitting, <laughs> which would normally be an obstacle we could overcome, but we were also live. <laughs> right. And it was the best showing out of any of our live streams. Yeah. So we were like, oh no. You were talking about that Christmas one? Oh yeah. yeah. What did I do for Christmas? Oh, that, that, that was yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was like Christmas Eve. Yeah. Ago. We were drinking beer and doing some metal fabricating. Hey, Mike Curtis. What's up, Mike Curtis? Welcome, welcome. It was, you guys have no idea how hard it has been for me not to open this box uh, until now. So happy Wednesday, everybody. Trickle in. I don't know how many people we'll get. It's 1130 on a Wednesday. Hump day. But I hope everybody's doing well, staying warm. God, the wind, man, last night. I felt like my house was going to get blown over. Yeah, I don't think you can see comments when you go well, full no, screen. Oh. Oh, weird. Okay. So it's fixed now. Cool. So anyway, I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. So the point of today's video is, uh, well, for one, to expose UPS if there's any damage to my new TIG welder, because look at this box. This is how it showed up at my house. Um, inside of here is allegedly a functional TIG welder from a company called Everlast. And um, I've been TIG welding for about five or six years. Uh, I've used a Miller Dynasty for a while at Black Dog. I've used the Eastwood TIG 200, which those machines are on the opposite side of the price spectrum. The Eastwood TIG 200 that I have is over there, that little black, black dude on the right with the red buttons. Uh, that welder costs about 750 bucks, uh, brand new from Eastwood. I love Eastwood. They, um, they satisfy a nice bracket in the pricing structure for fabrication tools. Their tools are on the cheaper side, but for home gamers or people that are just starting out, it's great. But then, of course, my whole life, I've used Miller welders, MIG and TIG welders. That's my baby there. That's a Millermatic 212 MIG welder. That's probably about 12 years old. And uh, it's, it works great. It is going strong. It's never let me down. So <clears throat> on loan for a little while, I had a brand new Miller uh, Dynasty 210 TIG welder. It was not the DX model, so the controls were oversimplified, in my opinion. And the, the welder brand new cost like $3,800 and really didn't give you a whole lot of custom, customization. Uh, so shout out, I started doing my own uh, research on YouTube and whatnot for middle of the road price wise TIG welders. And shout out to Justin over at the Fabrication Series on YouTube. He did a lot of really good um, reviews and real world tests of these Eastwood TIG welders. And I think the, the other guy's name is Justin as well. Justin Voss, I think, is a YouTuber, a TIG welder, fabricator, correct me if I'm wrong. But those guys could not say enough good words about Everlast and uh, price to performance. So this, full disclosure, is a $1,500 TIG welder. Uh, my whole bill at Everlast was about $2,200 because I got extra torches. I got a cart, which isn't here yet. Uh, I don't think it's even shipped yet. Uh, but what happened was I ordered this in mid-December. I ordered the, the 210 EXT Power TIG. I got an email about two days later saying, hey, 
we are out of stock on the 2020 models. If you can wait two or three weeks, we'll send you the 2021 model. And at the time I was like, sure, just excited to place the order. And uh, it really took a month and some change to get here. Is that door open? Oh no, it's just a big door. Uh, so it finally showed up. Uh, UPS drop kicked it into my house, as you can tell, uh, and I've not opened it. So without further ado, let's crack it open. Inside here should be the welder itself, uh, the two torches that it comes with, and then some upgraded torches. Oh gosh, there's a power cable right on top. I'm glad I didn't cut the side. And whatever else this thing comes with. So. Never done an unboxing video before, so here we go. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the unboxing of my new TIG welder. So we got instructions. Don't really need those. Uh, Pre-wired for a 220 plug, so that's going to be good. About to see if this thing made it. Look at this box. This thing got drop kicked into my house. Uh, it's a lot of styrofoam, so that's good. In here, we got some basic consumables that I will not be using. Oh man, this smell is, it's like a pool, it's like that pool vinyl smell, you know, the pool float smell. Okay, so this is an upgraded torch. It's a torch that actually has an amp control button on it. So excited to look into that. Uh, oh wow, these look like blue jeans. Look at that. The sleeve around the cable looks like <laughs> denim. That's awesome. It's the Canadian torch. <laughs> so this is, I think, one of the torches the machine comes with stock. And then here's another. I think I'm going to have four torches total <laughs> for this machine because I wanted to order the nice ones, but you, you can't substitute for the ones that it comes with. Yeah, there's, so that's <laughs> four TIG torches right there. Uh, nice ground. Ooh, that's really nice. Uh, I don't have the other one for comparison, but normally there's some fiber, some stranded cable in here that doesn't work very well. That's a really nice ground clamp. God, it's freezing in here. All right, we got the Nova foot pedal. Anyone who's ever ordered a cheap TIG machine knows that the foot pedals are terrible. So we got an upgraded foot pedal so you can put your whole foot on there and rock it back and forth. Sounds kind of cheap, but let's hope it works well. Um, it's probably a $100 foot pedal, so of course. God, let's keep going. So here's a stinger if you want to do any stick welding. Uh, it's not 1940 anymore, so I usually don't do any stick welding. Gas line. We got a 220 to 110 adapter, so this uh, welder can actually run off of uh, house voltage 110, which is nice. You can't run it at full power, obviously, because you'll break, you'll blow breakers. But nice to have. Looks like this is the top handle. Some other stuff. I'm guessing this is the regulator. Yeah. So that's a gas bottle regulator. So, all right. So we got that stuff out of the way. Let's get to the main event. Oh, what an awful sound. So that's one of those misophonic sounds that drive people nuts. I don't mind the styrofoam, but I hate uh, nails on a chalkboard. That's my least favorite. Dad would be scraping paint off of glass in the shop. He can't hear anything, so he's like fine with it. I'm over here like, oh. Okay, well, we'll see if it's broken. I'm going to cut this down. No need for me to do any more damage to it. Everlast is green. People in the welding community are usually, usually classify their welders by the color. Miller's blue, Lincoln's red, Eastwood's black, and Everlast picked green. Just a cow. <laughs> Yeah. All right, all right. First impressions are good. I can't help but think of like all the Linus Tech Tip videos where he unboxes really expensive components and just drops them on the floor.
it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's awesome. Anybody else comment? What's up, Eric? You come back for some more fab work. Got a nice new TIG welder. Okay, is it broken? I don't think so. So shout out to Everlast for their packing. UPS looked like they just backed up to my house and hit the brakes really hard. It just came out the back of the truck. Uh, cool, so here's the machine. These are, I don't know that many of these welders are out there yet because this is the 2021 model. So I've never used an Eastwood welder, but as far as I can tell, the controls are exactly the same as the 2020. They redesigned the plastic fascia on it, uh, but all this is the same. Um, I'm not a TIG welding expert, but I have watched a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, one unique thing about this machine is that you can purge the gas with a button instead of uh, pressing the pedal and risking like jumping the arc to the table and stuff like that. Uh, it has just about every setting on it that you could ask for. I'm not going to get into the weeds on that. If you want to learn more about all the technical stuff, there's, there's guys that have done videos on that all over YouTube, many of which I've watched drinking a beer on the couch at my house. So that's how you do research, everybody. <clears throat> Well, let's make sure it turns on. How about that? I like it's big and chunky. Moment of truth. Wow. Can you guys hear that? It's not as bad as Steve's MIG welder, but it's way louder than I thought it was going to be. No kidding. This is where I should probably pause and read the manual, but it does turn on, so that's great. High frequency TIG, oh, I see. Now you can switch between DC, AC waveforms. Cool. So, yeah, good. Despite UPS's best efforts, it still works. So, should we, I, I don't wanna drag you guys into all the setup because I've always found that stuff to be insanely boring. But uh, I will show you the torches that I got for it. I love this denim, man. It's so good. Look at that. It's like recycled blue jeans. It's so rad. Um, this is a designer welder, okay? <laughs> now the blue jeans don't have holes in them. So. That's true, yeah. Here's the thing, a solution that I feel like I didn't come up with this, but it's brilliant. People pay a lot of money for jeans with holes in them, right? Homeless people don't have clothes. Give new jeans to homeless people. Let them wear holes in them. I, them I guess the weird part is then you take their jeans away. Well, you've got to have a constant cycle. Right, and then you, you have to supply them with the next. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's something there. So this is a WP26 torch. It's a big, fat boy. Uh, you can run lots and lots of amperage through a 26 torch. What comes with it is a 17 torch, which is small. You can see the difference. 17s, well, actually, this is a 9, I believe. So 9 torches are real small. Uh, you can't run a lot of uh, amperage through them, but they're really easy to maneuver. Whereas on the other, I'll show you the difference, actually. I've only just begun to understand the difference in naming conventions and TIG torches. But this is a 9, and this is a 26. So nice and small, but you can't max out the amperage. A little bigger, a little clunkier, but you can turn this thing up to 11, and it's, and it's going to be just fine. So they all take the same consumables, the 26 and the, not, uh, the 17 torches. This is a fancy one that I got. This is a, it's got an amperage control and a start button on the actual torch. Um, God, that rubber smell is awful. And so that's a 26. I, would, I can imagine this one being really nice for 
Uh, things that are, like if I have to stand and it's hard for me to use the foot pedal, I can just do all the amp control here. That's actually kind of slick, check that out. So it's easy to kind of take one finger and change the amperage and then initiate the, the arc. Everything feels really nice. Got its own liner. Cool, so then this, this one's fancy. This is called a Rotoflex, and I would imagine this is the torch I'm gonna probably use the whole time. This torch has an indexable head. So you can loosen this, move this around, and then lock it in place. So like I can imagine like TIG welding pipes and roll cages and things that are hard to get to. You can just change the head, move it around. So these are from a company called Nova, I believe. That company. You can buy their accessories through East, uh, East Everlast. Sorry, not Eastwood. Um, so this is the Nova Flex Torch. It's a 26. And um, yeah, some bend here. This one is made to bend. So this one shouldn't break, but everything breaks eventually. But anyway, yeah, so I'm excited to start tinkering, put it together. Um, we'll probably do another video when I got it up and running. Do some weld testing. I have some small aluminum projects actually that I'm waiting to tackle. And now I'm, I have a welder to do it with. So uh, s initial impressions are good. Uh, I'll let you guys know how it does. But so far, I definitely like what I'm seeing from Everlast. And again, uh, follow Justin at the Fabricator Series. And I believe the other Justin, Justin Voss, both those guys are on YouTube. Both have done full, in-detail reviews of this machine, so I'm not gonna waste my time doing the same thing when they know more than I do about the technical details. Anyway, so go check those guys out. Hit a subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thank you for coming out. Uh, happy Wednesday, and uh, go weld something. See you guys. <coughs>